Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another 101.5 lesson, Scrapbooking 101.5, and we are going to talk about creating double-sided borders, using punches to create double-sided punched borders. Uh, there are some kind of um, rules to follow or ideas that will help you with that, so we're going to talk about that and make a couple and talk about some different variations that you can do using the different punches. It's going to be a fun one. I hope this is helpful for you. Um, also, just while I have you, if you have any questions or ideas or would like to see something specific in a 101.5 lesson, I would love it if you would comment and send me that information so that I can include that in an upcoming episode. Thanks so much for your input. And let's go ahead and check out my workspace and get started. All right, so in my workspace today, you can see I've got my border maker system out and a few cartridges that we're gonna play with today. I've got um, the poinsettia, oh, poinsettia edge is what they call this one, poinsettia edge punch, and the brocade chain border make or border punch. This one is the new one that you got as a gift with purchase if you wanted it here recently. And this one is the candy cane border punch. And so I just wanted to talk to you about several kind of different options first, and then I'm going to show you a few things. Okay, so if you were to just use your border maker system and punch the candy cane punch, this is what you would get. And you would trim it off so that this edge equals this edge. And it's a, it's a very cute border and you could lace some um, paper through this border and it would su be super cute. I've seen that done. Um, or you could just leave it on its own with the background color. Whatever makes you happy. But you can jazz this one up and recently, um, I don't know exactly when it came out, maybe a month ago now, I used this border maker cartridge to create a border in my Ireland scrapbook. And that border resembled this, where I was able to take this border maker cartridge and by flipping my paper around, I was able to change it up a little bit and make it look a little, give it a little more interest. Because as you can see, the angles of the lines go different directions. So that's a fun thing to do with a border maker cartridge or any punch really. You can duplicate this and, and do what I'm talking about today, which is doubling up your punches, punching on two sides of a piece or varying the pattern. So this is the same, I, I punched this the same, much the same way I punched this one. And then I came back with my scissors and I cut portions of it out to create these diamonds in the middle. So just a fun option, another idea for you, all right? Then I also was playing with the banner punch that we had out not too long ago. The banner punch is a lot like our brocade chain punch because any chain punch is going to punch out and separate from the base paper, all right? So like this one, the candy cane punch is not a chain punch. This one, when you punch it, it is still attached to your main piece of paper. You have to go back in with your trimmer and cut it off from the main piece of paper. When you cut a chain punch, you can see the difference if I hold them right next to each other. You can see that on this one, the metal is, the metal is extended to both edges of this punch, right? The metal here only punches the design. So that's the difference between a chain punch and a, an attached punch, okay? So, but you can still use a chain punch to punch something double-sided, okay? That's what I've done here. 
This banner punch is similar to a chain punch. It completely separates from the base page. But if you fold your paper over, the trick is in order to use, in order to do this in a CM, using a CM punch, you want to make sure you're using designer paper. The designer weight paper, you can fold over and punch it. It is a little bit harder than punching it in a single sheet because essentially it's like punching two pieces together because you fold it in half. But it can be done. Don't try it though with cardstock. It will not work. You will, you will fuss with that forever and it will not work. Okay. But the fun thing about folding your paper over to make a, to make a border attach to its mirror image like this one is you can play with the size. So do you see this one? I gave it a little more space. Same punch was used for both of these, but you can see how very different they are. So you can play with it and, and get a, a lot of variants from your punches. So let me show you a little bit more um, what we can do. I just pulled out some kind of scrap paper and I'm gonna set that there. And I'm gonna just leave this one out so you can see it sort of off to the side here. And if I can get, we're, uh, we're dog sitting our nephew and his wife's puppy and she has made herself at home right under my legs. So I'm just gonna kinda try to scoot over and use this area without disturbing her too much. Okay, post-it notes are gonna be your friend for a situation like we're getting into here. And um, let me just try something. So, cause I will, I'll teach you a lot of different things by doing this one thing in particular. Okay, we're gonna use our border maker system. So I'm gonna open the guard and we're gonna place our paper. This is some craft paper. So it's a little thicker than designer paper, but it's very close, so it works for what we're gonna do. We're not gonna fold it in half. We're just going to punch single sides. Okay, so I'm using this punch right here, which is a super fun one. It came out with our zoo stuff the um, a, a year and a half ago, I wanna say. Um, it's called the zebra stripe, and you can see how the stripes vary in their thickness and their shape, uh, which can be really, really fun. You could use this for a lot of different things and it is, uh, it's just a fun punch. So I'm gonna punch this down one, one way and then I'm gonna show you how we determine how to add to this, okay? So you punch it once, whatever punch you're using and this one is a connected punch, so that's helpful. Then you're gonna measure, I measure from the base of what is punched on the left to the, to the edge of my paper, okay? So I'm measuring, I put the line on my desktop right up to that edge where it's punched, okay? So I can't see the line anymore, but it's just barely over the top. And you can see that I have a one inch from that edge to this edge. So if I cut this at two inches, then I will have another, I can punch the other side. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll punch this, or we'll cut this at two inches. Now, this is the way it came out of my, my housing, my paper holder, okay? Rather than turning it around and getting crazy with it, I'm just gonna flip it over this way. See that? So I flipped it over this way. That way, the end I started on is still at the top. And that's only important if you want to try to match something. If you don't care and you, you're you okay with it being off just slightly, then no worries, okay? So I'm measuring just before the two, actually this would be more like one and 
15 sixteenths or whatever that is. It's the very it's the mark right before the two that I'm lining this up at. And I'm gonna cut this off. Alright. So now I've got a piece that is almost two inches. And I'm gonna put it back into my border maker but it's short. Do you see how it doesn't make it to the magnet that's going to hold it firmly? So I'm going to grab my post-it notes. These are just three inch post-it notes. I'm going to attach them to the edge of my paper and I use at least two but you could use three if you wanted to make your um, border super secure. My, I, I do okay with two. I don't feel like I need three. So it's up to you. Okay, then you're going to fold the guide back under and see how it holds your paper right where it needs to be. Then we're going to come back in here and we're going to punch again. Do you see how your lines meet up pretty well? I have just a little bit there's a little bit of a notch on either side of them and you can see on these there's actually a little bit of a line left. But let me show you what you can do there. Hold on a second, let's get rid of our punch confetti. Okay, so you can go back in with your precision cut scissors and you can trim off these tiny little areas that maybe don't meet exactly if they bother you or you can come in here and you can trim off if your punch was a little wide or you didn't get your punch all the way into the housing before you punch down this can happen for a lot of reasons but sometimes you end up with just a little bit of residual in the middle so I always go in underneath it and up because I feel like I can get a little bit closer with my scissors and make it a little cleaner when I'm trimming it's not perfect but it's close okay so you just go in and remove all those little itty bitty pieces from the middle. Then you can go in with a different border. Let's let's do this one that we that some of us got for free in that promo that was recently done. This one has a name. It's called the Dotted Diamonds. Okay? And we're going to use some some of this yellow. So I'm just going to put that in there. And we're going to go down and we're just going to punch. One of these. Now if you wanted to make this one a double sided. Let me show you how you would do that. But I wanted a single just for right now. Okay so there's there's a single. We're going to use that in just a second. But let's go ahead and punch, make it a double. Let me show you how we would do that. Okay, so we're going to take this punched piece, we're going to measure it. You want to know exactly how wide this piece is. It looks like it is going to be 7 eighths of an inch wide. So if we make, if we double that and then come back just a little bit, it will double up this point in the middle. Okay, so let's see, what would that be? Seven eighths, seven eighths, and seven eighths is one and three quarters. And if we come back a sixteenth of an inch, that's probably all we need. So let's trim let's trim this all 
Oh, the other thing you have to consider is how far in you are pushing your paper. So look at, if you look at this punch, typically a border maker punch is going to be one inch wide from this edge to this edge. It'll be one inch wide. All right. So you can see how the border itself punches almost an eighth of an inch from the edge. So we want to allow for that too. So an eighth and an eighth is a quarter. Plus we need an, just shy of an inch and three quarters for just the punched part. So I think if we did two inches, Let's try it with two inches and see how that goes. So I'm gonna cut this paper at two inches. And then I'm going to come back in with my scoring blade. And this is because I don't, I don't like to have to try to fold my paper straight because inevitably I mess up and then my stuff is crooked. So if you just use the scoring blade and then line that back up at one inch on each side and score that piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a heavy score, just a little bit. Replacing my cutting blade because you guys know that I typically forget. Okay, so then we're gonna fold this paper in half and I can do that with this yellow paper because it's, it's that new like 65 pound cardstock that we have. So it's, a, it's lighter, okay? It's definitely lighter. This one we're gonna need our three inch post-its for as well. And we're gonna end up punching these, just, just know that you're gonna end up with holes in your post-it. But that's okay, we can take that off later, right? So we're gonna stick that in there, line up the folded edge against the top here, or against your guide. And then secure the magnet. Okay, then we're gonna come back in with, whoop, there we go. We're gonna come back in with our punch. Let's see if I measured right. Let's see. You have to make sure the punch, make sure the paper is all the way to the back of the punch. So I just sort of give it a little tug to make sure it's all lined up before I punch. Oh yeah, see, we didn't get it quite close enough. So that is, that is a dilemma. Another way you could do it though, is to go in here, and this probably works best, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Let's start from this end. It really is tricky to, to make a chain punch stick together, but it can be done. And the way that you do it is you, the folded edge goes in first and you put the end of your paper right at the end of the punch. So the end of my paper is right at this edge and the tips of these diamonds are just barely over the edge Sorry, I, I adjusted it myself. Okay, so just barely over the edge, we're gonna punch that down. Okay, and then we're going to come back down here and we're gonna line it up exactly the same way, as close to that as we possibly can. Same amount over the edge of the same amount of the diamond over the edge, same amount of everything. 
Okay, so looking inside there, the cut edge is up all the way to the top of the punch, and then just a little, just a hint of the points on those diamonds goes over the edge. All right, and then when you open it up, you have a lattice and it's attached. Cool, huh? So you can do that with any of your chain border punches. I could do that same, the same method and use one of my other, my brocade chain. Let me just show you really quick. I could do that with this one and just make sure that the two bits that go to the bottom are over the edge so that they will be connected. Sorry, when you, whenever you cut little bits, sometimes it gets stuck. Come on out. Oh, I see what's happening. Something caught, so when I try to pull it out, it's bending up instead of going out. Come on, stay down, there we go. All right, so you can see how the brocade chain can be attached here and here and create some really cute, kind of a heart shape, look at that. That's kind of cool. I may have to use that sometime. All right, so really experimentation is the name of the game until you feel comfortable with doing this, but it is fun to just play with paper. So when you get a paper pack, go ahead and use the cover sheet as your experiment piece. Um, how you can put this together, I just wanted to run this by you also. Use a decorative trimming blade. So I'm going to pull out my, let's see, what's new? Let's use the pinking blade. We use the pinking blade, which I noticed, um, and, and by the time you get this, hopefully it'll still be available, but I noticed it's hot on the website, which means that whenever you see something marked hot, that means that um, it's going to run out and once it's once it's gone it's gone so if you think you might want this you um, hopefully you'll still have it available but um, don't delay okay so this is a two and a half I started with a two and a half inch piece of green and I'm just lining this up on the right hand cutting line on my mat so I can cut just that itty bitty edge off. Okay, and then we can take our diamonds that we punched and we can put them through. Let's see, I think I started down here and I had decided that if we went two over I think it was two over and one under. I think that's what I decided would work. Yep. Okay, so two over, one under, and if you just keep feeding that through, whoops, I just went the other way, then you can get kind of a cute little border. I'm sorry. Doing this, bringing stuff, um, or weaving, weaving, that's the term I'm looking for. Weaving stuff always seems to take me longer. 
And I don't know if it's just because my brain just has a hard time forming the pattern or my fingers don't want to cooperate. I don't know. All right, so once you have that through, you can place it on top of a background paper and it makes a really cute border. You could, you could use anything to go up through the middle and weave it through and it would be super cute. Or you could just do a single, but sometimes making it twice as wide is fun. So experiment and I hope you find some combinations that you really, really like. It's fun to uh, layer things. It's fun to weave things. It's fun to make things twice as wide. Have fun with it. And um, let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until next time, I hope you have many more creative moments. Make it a great day. Mm -hmm.